Hey guys, Avi here, and welcome back to your Python series. In this video, we're going to be learning about for loops. Now, the core concept of for loops is that you're iterating over something, whether that be a data structure or a series of numbers. Now, we've talked about lists, we've talked about tuples, so I'm going to go ahead and create a list, call it list1, and I'm just going to populate it with some fruits. You know, what we've been doing before, apples, bananas, and cherries, okay? And I'm also going to create a tuple, top one, and I'm going to go ahead and just put in some numbers. doesn't matter. It can be anything. This is just to show you guys how to iterate over these data structures. Now, let's say I want to access every value or I want to print out every single value in my list. What am I going to do? I'm going to use a for loop. I'm going to say for, and then the next thing you write over here is going to be the variable name. What do you want each item in your list or in your tuple to be known as? I'm going to call mine item for item in list one colon. Okay, so for item in list one, I want to print out item. Okay, so again, looking at this code, it's very straightforward. Thinking about it literally, you're just going over every item in the list and you're printing it out. Hit enter, I get apples, bananas, cheers. Awesome. So, what exactly happened here? The for loop iterates over every single item in the list. It goes to the first one. It says, okay, the value is apples. I'm assigning this value apples to my variable item. And then in the code, it says print item. So it's going to print out apples. Then it goes to the next item in the list, bananas. For item in list one, okay, so we're at bananas. Item is now bananas, print bananas. So it prints out bananas and it does the exact same thing for cherries. Now let's go ahead and print out our tuple. For top or sure, we can do item again. For item in tuple one, colon, print item, okay? So if I iterate over a tuple, it's the exact same concept. 13, 12, 15. So that's one way you use for loops to iterate over a specific data structure, get each item, and then maybe do something with it. Maybe you want to find out what's in the list. Maybe you want to add stuff to it. Maybe you want to change stuff up. doesn't matter what it is, but for loops are very effective in iterating over a data structure. The second reason why you might want to use a for loop is to iterate over numbers. Now we haven't talked about functions yet, and I plan to do that in a future video, but for loops use or you can use a for loop with something known as a range function. The range function gives you basically a series of numbers starting from one index going to another index. So let's take a look at how this works. Most of the time when you use a for loop with the range function, I use the variable i. Um, it's just one of those things you say for i in something, but you can use any variable name you want. Just remember what it is. So for i in range, okay? After range, go ahead and type two parentheses. Um, again, shift nine, shift zero, and then you're going to specify the initial index and the ending index. So I'm going to say from range. So for I in range zero to 10, print I. Okay. I get zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So one thing that's key about the range function is that it doesn't go to the second index you specify. It goes to one less. If I want to print out the first 10 numbers from one to 10, I'm going to have to say for I in range one. And then instead of specifying 10, because I know 10 is not going to be printed out, I'm going to say 1 to 11. And then I'm going to print out i. If I do that, I get 1 through 10, all 10 numbers. Okay, so that's basically the range function for you. One cool thing about the range function is its skip feature. Let's say that I want to print out all the even numbers, the first, all the even numbers in the first 10 digits, okay? The way I can do that is using a skip function. For i in range 0, to let's say one less than 11 to so 10 and then two. Okay. So for I in range zero, 11, two colon print I, I'm going to get zero, two, four, six, eight, ten. What's really cool about this is how it, you know, how it's skipping the odd numbers. It goes from zero to two, two to four, four to six, and so on. The reason for that is because you specified the increment factor. Instead of always adding one, if you leave it blank, if you just specify for I in range one comma 11, it's going to add one each time. But if you specify the increment factor, like we did over here, and we're saying zero, 11, two, we're adding two to each number. So it's zero plus two, two, two plus two, four, four plus two, six, so on and so forth. So as a quick challenge for you guys, go ahead and print out the first 10 multiples of five. Okay. Pause the video right now. If you want, go ahead, try doing that. Okay, hopefully you guys did that. Should be pretty straightforward. You're gonna say for i in range zero comma fifty one comma five. Okay, so you're starting from zero and you're working your way up. 
I'm gonna print out I and I'm gonna get 5, 10, 15, 20, all the way up to 50. Awesome. So that's the core function of the range. It basically gets you a series of numbers and you can specify if you want to skip, if you want to increment differently, so on and so forth. That's for loops in a nutshell. You use them to iterate over a data structure, whether it's lists or tuples or anything else. And you use them to iterate over numbers using the range function. Um, one thing you guys can definitely play around with is using nested for loops. So I could say something like for I in range zero to five, for I or for J in range, remember use different variables for J in range zero to three. Okay, I'm gonna print out I times J or um, yeah, sure, print out I times J and I'm gonna get something like this. So you can use nested for loops to perform different functions, iterate over different, maybe multi-dimensional arrays, stuff like that. But that's the core concept of for loops. In the next lecture, we'll discuss while loops and dive deeper into how loops work, stuff like that. Hopefully you guys understood what for loops were in this lecture. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.